also very challenging because you are also trying to do something on the area of terahertz. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So maybe we can start uh, with your permission and Professor Manoj. Meher, please take over. Uh, Long greetings to everyone present here. I am Meher, chairperson of IEEE MTTS SBC DC Barton Hill Trenavaram. On behalf of MTTS Kerala, IEEE MTTS SBC IISD, and IEEE MTTS SBC GCBH, I welcome you all to the first distinguished micro of this year. Terahertz communications at 300 gigahertz prices are key decisions by the following song. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. Dhes Manoj, Professor IIST Trivandrum for the inaugural address. Yeah, thank you, Meher, for uh, uh, yeah, meeting me. Um, Dr. Chinmay, Dr. Apren, Dr. Hodging Song, uh, Kanu Muhammad, Kopika, Meher, and uh, uh, esteemed uh, gathering here. A very good uh, morning, good noon. Evening, depending on your uh, or time zone. Let me welcome you to this inaugural talk. IEEE MTTS Kerala chapter was uh, formed uh, just one and a half years back. Maybe right, right now this is the middle of the second year of uh, MTTS Kerala chapter. Um, I remember correct. Uh, maybe Chinme will tell that uh, accurately later. In the first year itself uh, has been a very eventful, successful event with uh, highly relevant and high quality events that we could hold. And in fact, Chinmay had been getting a lot of, lot of accolades for uh, not only founding that, but also leading that in a very, very successful manner. I'm really glad that uh, you know, I'm a member of MTTS uh, as well as this uh, cha Kerala chapter of MTTS uh, during its formative years uh, and see that, you know, the lively activities that it actually conducts. This event is jointly organized by MTTS Kerala chapter as well as uh, GEC Barton Hill Student Branch chapter with some support from IAST Student Branch chapter. So uh, we have been really fortunate that even during the middle of pandemic, uh, you know, our activities in IEEE could be conducted uh, equally successfully uh, during 2020 as well as in 2021. So in fact, we have been able to get access to some of the highest quality speakers and the you know, doyens of this area, microwave, uh, uh, as well as antennas related areas during the last year as well as this year. In fact, uh, I'm very glad that uh, uh, Dr. Hojing Zong could join us uh, uh, in you know uh, extend in in you know expanding our activities as well as in spreading some of the cutting edge areas uh, to our membership here. So in fact, the title of today's talk itself is an indication that uh, you know MTTS Kerala chapter is uh, really focused on bringing the latest advancement uh, uh, of the research areas, including heads communication, uh, 60 gigahertz communication, 300 gigahertz or beyond uh, communication systems and uh, associated technologies. So, uh, uh, without uh, you know uh, taking too much time, uh, I'm really glad and I declare the event is inaugurated. Uh, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Over to you, Meher. Thank you so much, sir. I call Dr. Simmer Saha, Chairman, IEEE MTTS Care Lab Chapter, to brief us about the exception activities. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Meher. Uh, thanks again to uh, Professor Song for his uh, consent and also to the MTT Society for approving all our requests whenever we send any request, whether it's DL or any other kind of request for uh, society support, even the society president himself. You know, they are very active and always very supportive. So my sincere thanks on behalf of the uh, MTT Kerala as well as IIST GC Barton uh, for all the support that we received. 
And uh, because it's a very highly focused technical talk, I won't take much time and <laughs> remain between the, uh, the participants and the speaker. Only thing, a uh, couple of points I'd like to mention that uh, during the pandemic last year, around April 2020, we started these uh, activities of online activities. And last year in December, we had Professor Song with us in a one day event uh, where we had four speakers. So Professor Song was the keynote speaker and we turned that particular event under L4 series because L4 is a new uh, series of events initiated by MTTS Kerala chapter, which stands for learn from leaders and learn from legends. Needless to say, at this uh, young age, Dr. Song has uh, done a lot of uh, high quality work, pioneering work in the areas of terahertz communication. And because of uh, some experience in this area and some of our students doing some work in the areas of photoconductive antennas for terahertz applications, I can uh, well say that this is a, a real opportunity for us also to collaborate to here and to associate with the group of uh, Professor Sam. And uh, I am very happy to inform that L4 event uh, was featured recently in IEEE MTTS Microwave Magazine, March 2021. You can have a look uh, in, uh, from IEEE Explore. And some of our uh, events like, uh, you know, these are some uh, December 2019 events probably Mayor is displaying. Uh, as you can see, uh, so we are actually very vibrant as Professor Manoj mentioned because of our uh, pillars. The pillars are none other than our students and our volunteers and some of our very you know, close uh, colleagues like Professor Anu Muhammad, uh, Mr. Origi, Dr. Apren, and some of our other colleagues from Cochin University like uh, Professor Anandan, Professor Mohanan, Dr. Dikki, Dr. Abdullah and others. So with uh, having a very nice uh, and uh, you know, uh, vibrant team with us, we are really happy to do and cater to the um, society students uh, society, especially during this pandemic situation. As Professor Song was mentioning at the very beginning, we are really having a tough time, you know, probably break, uh, we thought of breaking the chain, but probably we couldn't do, but at the same time, uh, the situation is alarming and challenging, but uh, students sitting at the home, they should get something from us, uh, especially some uh, technical exposure, some kind of practical exposure. And people like Professor Song are the you know, people who can actually cater to uh, this kind of uh, de demanding situation. And apart from the technical things, we are trying to uh, battle with the pandemic situation with a limited capacity in all possible fronts. Uh, during uh, last June, July, um, Professor Manoj and, and myself took some initiative and distributed some low cost, uh, indigenously designed face shield for our uh, employees and some of our you know, uh, colleagues and students working in the lab. And this year we are uh, you know, distributing some MTTS and IEEE logo embedded face mask and brooch uh, for some of our uh, members. I mean, for all the MTTS members across the Kerala. Very soon you will be receiving this item through uh, courier. So I don't want, don't want to prolong uh, my thing. So with this, I uh, would request, uh, you know, Mehet to take over and request uh, Professor Song, uh, you know, to start the proceedings after being introduced uh, by uh, some of our officers. Thank you very much again, uh, Professor Song, and thank uh, to all the participants across the whole globe. I see a lot of participants from outside India. So thank you very much for uh, connecting with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I welcome Dr. Apri PJ, President R&D, RFM Microwave, Duke Technical Park to Andrum, to introduce our speaker of the day. Professor Apri? Meher, can you check whether Professor Apren uh, could connect or not? Yes, sir. I, I don't see his name in the participants list. Dr. Apren, are you there?
you know, uh, I was in the meantime, I'll keep you busy with the <laughs> saying few things. So you can see the article on MTTS magazine, MTT Society News. This is March uh, 2021. And these remain in that slide. And the left photograph is actually the inauguration of L4, Learn from Leaders and Learn from Legends series. And as you can see, President uh, 2020, uh, Dr. Ala Abunjale, and then uh, President elect uh, 2021, uh, President 2022, Dr. Rasaunda, Professor Nuno Carvalho, he is very well known in our uh, area, especially in the area of wireless power transfer. Then Dr. Gautam uh, from JPL NASA. Uh, Dr. Ramesh, uh, you know, and then uh, our very close friend, Dr. Purda, Dr. Siddiqui, uh, then uh, Professor Shivan Kaul, of course, because he is like our father figure. He's the person who, you know, uh, you know, encouraged us to come up with this chapter. So, and the second one is also, uh, you know, basically the similar uh, in, uh, in, uh, flyer. And uh, yeah, so, and this is the magazine article. You can have a look at your uh, convenience. Professor Apren, are you there? Okay, I think he is having some connectivity issue. Uh, so on behalf of MTTS Kerala, let me uh, introduce uh, Professor uh, Song. In fact, he doesn't require any introduction because he is uh, known to his scholarly articles and high quality works. But as a custom, I'll introduce uh, Professor Song. Uh, Dr. Song received his B.S. degree in electronics engineering from King Pook uh, National University, Daegu, Korea in 1999 and M.S. and Ph.D. degree in electrical engineering from Gwangju Institute of Science and Technology, Gwangju, Korea in 2001 and 2005 respectively. Since he joined Nippon Telegraph and Telephone Japan in 2006, which is the third largest telecommunication company in the world. He had engaged in the development of sub millimeter and terahertz wave devices, circuits, and systems for communication, remote sensing, and imaging applications. In 2015, he was named to a distinguished research scientist of NTT Labs. Since 2016, Dr. Song has been with the Department of Electrical Engineering, Pohang University of Science and Technology, Pohang, Korea. His current research interest includes millimeter wave and terahertz circuits antenna packages and test bed systems, particularly for wireless communication, connectivity, and uh, radar applications. Dr. Song was a recipient of DIST Best Thesis Award 2005, NTT Labs Research of the Year Award 2009 and 2014, Young Scientist Award of Spectroscopical Society of Japan 2010, IEEE Microwave and Wireless Component uh, Letters, Taosu Ito Best Paper Award 2014, and Best Industrial Paper Award at IEEE MTTS IMS 2016. He's a senior IEEE member and IEEE Distinguished Microwave Lecturer for uh, 2019 to 20, uh, 2021 term. Uh, thank you very much again, Professor Sam, for accepting our invitation. Uh, over to you, Professor Sam. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your kind introduction and uh, uh, can I share my slide now? Okay, let me try. Yes, yes. Okay, and maybe, right. So do you see my slide now? Maybe yeah. like this, okay, all right. Okay. Um, Okay, let's get started. Okay, thank you very much for uh, inviting to your chapters for my DML talk. And uh, it's my great pleasure to uh, have uh, this chance to talk with you or discuss with you about the terrorist communications. So uh, I just looked at the uh, number of participants and I believe that this is uh, the, uh, the, the peak number one uh, uh, attendee so that uh, I'm very pleased about that, and uh, I really uh, glad. Uh, I'm really uh, grateful about that. So today I'm going to talk about the terrorist communications uh, that is working at 300 years. So actually, uh, so 
basically, you know, what we did is uh, we tried to develop the one very simple uh, preliminary system level uh, data link simulations operating at uh, 300 gigahertz. <clears throat> but during that uh, research, uh, during that the re uh, research, we found that there are a couple of issues uh, actually coming from the device package and system level uh, challenges. So today I'm going to share what we experienced uh, for the charge communication system research. And then the, uh, I would like to conclude with some future respectives. Okay, so before getting into the detail, I'd like to give my special thanks to my colleagues in Japan and Korea. And then the, here is a, a brief uh, agenda of my talk today. So first of all, I'd like to briefly introduce why we are so interested in terahertz frequencies for wireless communication system. And then the, I will briefly review the history of the terahertz communication research uh, worldwide. And then the, the main part of this talk uh, is about the first full system level demonstrations in kiosk data download system. There is actually a very simple uh, data transfer system operating with the uh, ASK uh, data modulations at 300 gigahertz. And then during that, uh, we feel, or well, we realize that there are a couple of issues, particularly for packages, so that uh, uh, I may have a chance to uh, show a couple of uh, individual results on packaging. Okay, and then the, before concluding my talk, I'd like to share uh, what I'm thinking now for future uh, terrestrial communication research, particularly in my group, so that uh, maybe uh, I may give you uh, a couple of the ideas about the uh, remaining uh, challenges. Okay, uh, as you may know that the terrestrial wave uh, is, uh, in general, in general, many people uh, think that the terrestrial wave is a uh, uh, frequency range uh, between 100 gigahertz to 10 terahertz. So if you look at this, okay, so if you look at this electromagnetic spectrum, the terahertz wave is locating right between microwave and the light wave. So particularly in this uh, I mean specific uh, frequency region has uh, a couple of very, I mean, interesting unique features such as a very strong uh, spectroscopic interaction pattern with uh, large molecules such as uh, uh, man-made uh, uh, the compound molecules or uh, gases, so that some people are trying to uh, make a, a spectroscopic system or the sensing system or even radar system based on such a spectroscopic fingerprint to recognize the gases or man-made molecules concealed by uh, something else. And also, the, since the wavelength is very short compared to the ordinary microwave or millimeter wave frequency. So that uh, if we uh, in, if we try to or if we develop or if we use the terahertz wave for imaging system, then uh, obviously uh, we will be able to have much fine imaging resolutions. But despite of such a, I mean the interesting features of terahertz wave, it has not been used for even in research or commercial uses for a long time. That's because so the, the sensing spectroscopy or radar or even communication systems are all, uh, let's say, a sort of the wireless system. So the wireless system is, uh, I define here, for example, transmitter radiate electromagnetic wave into the air, and then the receiver will pick up a part of that the electromagnetic wave then may be transmitted from transmitter to receivers, or then may be a part of reflected signal from any uh, obstacle or the sample you would like to uh, measure. So uh, in, in this case, is, so uh, the most important thing to maintain the level operation of the whole wireless system is to get high enough signal-to-noise ratio, meaning that uh, we need to once radiate a high enough upper power and also receiver need to provide very low enough, uh, I mean, the very good enough uh, receiver sensitivity. So in that point of view, first of all, here's, so I plotted a couple of the uh, estimated upper powers from several potential uh, technology. So uh, as you can see here, the frequency band from, for example, 100 to 10, 100 gigahertz to 10 terahertz, the, the upper power from any sort of 
the technology uh, is getting to be degraded. So because of these features, many people used to say that uh, as a, a terrorist gap or a, a electromagnetic a gap between microwave or light ray. But again, the, we are so interested in the terrorist wave for wireless communication system. That's because uh, very large bandwidth. So you are now looking at one portals of the two basketball players. One is a tall and the other one is a small. So obviously you know that the uh, for the good basketball players, the height is very important. And is, in addition to that, the speed, the strength is also very important. But if you now have, uh, if you need to, for example, here, pick one of these two players, and if we assume that the uh, the tall guy is uh, very tall, as you can see here, but he is very slow and the strength is very bad. And on the other hand, the small guy is, has, is a very fast with a very, I mean, the good power and the strength then the, who are you going to pick for your team? I'm not sure that, but many of you may pick the taller guy rather than the small one. That's because in case of the, I mean, the, uh, I mean the, the weakness of the speed or strength can be improved by practice or even medical treatment later on, but height cannot be improved at all with any sort of, I mean, treatment or exercise. So what I'm going to say here is that the bandwidth is something like the uh, height for the NBA players. So once you have a large enough bandwidth, then we can send more data or we can make the system with a more simple way. So that is a very uh, important thing. Again, okay. <clears throat> if you really look at the very famous formulas, which is called the Shannon theory, that define the maximum data capacity of the given channels. So as you can see here, the maximum data capacity is simply bounded by a uh, given bandwidth and the signal to noise ratio of the whole of the system. Of course, you can increase the signal to noise ratio to improve the uh, maximum data rate, or we can also utilize the wider bandwidth to get more data capacity of the given channel. As I said before, the way to get the better signal to noise ratio is maybe if we have a better devices, then we can produce more powers or we can enhance the sensitivity of the receivers. What I'm saying, or in addition to that, uh, there's some sort of the signal processing will improve the sensitivity of the receiver as well. Or the, even with the low, uh, poor signal to noise ratio, effective signal to, uh, signal to noise ratio can be improved with the uh, digital signal processing. But important one is that bandwidth cannot be, I mean, enhanced or earned with any sort of the given technology. So that is a key point of the, uh, the key reason why we are so interested in the third frequencies for wireless communication system. Of course, one of you may worry about the attenuation loss in the airs at such a high frequencies. That might be true. So I plotted the attenuation loss uh, due to the, I mean, the uh, um, atmospheric attenuation uh, at up to three terahertz, as you can see here. So blue curve shows the heavy rain condition and the uh, black curve shows the dry air condition. But anyway, as you can see here, regardless the rain, uh, con uh, I mean, the conditions, you can see here is very picky characteristics at above one terahertz. And also the overall attenuation level is very high uh, of around uh, one to 10 dB per meter. So that uh, if now the communication system we are looking at need to transmit the, I mean, the terahertz wave more than uh, 10 meters or something, then attenuation loss in the air might be more than 10 dB or even 100 dB, which means that the practical application might be nearly impossible at around the, at above one terahertz. But if we zoom down, uh, zoom up uh, below one terahertz, then we can of course see the, a couple of peaks, I mean the several peaks, which is very high and tall. But uh, between those peaks, we can see very clear windows, even with the uh, heavy rain conditions. So for example, at 300 gigahertz, which is located at around here, if you look at that, the at least 40 gigahertz bandwidth seems to be available. 
if we can increase the frequency more than 600 years or 700 years, which is located at around maybe these windows, then available windows would be around the bandwidth will be around the 100 years. I hope you know that the how much. So here is one question. How large bandwidth is now used in this plan for any sort of the wireless communication system? For example, in Korea, the 4G LTE system occupies around the 40 megahertz or 80 megahertz uh, bandwidth. In case of the 5G communication system, the single channel assigned to single carrier is around 100 megahertz in Korea. And is. Of course, two channels can be used simultaneously. In that case, maybe 200 megahertz will be used for a 5G, 5G communication system. Obviously, the 60 gigahertz radio occupies actually very wide bandwidth of around the nine, uh, 7 to 9 gigahertz. And there are many other minor communication systems for satellite or military, uh, mili military applications that all occupies very narrow bandwidth of around 100 kilohertz or maybe up to 100, uh, 10 megahertz, something. So what I'm saying here is that combining all those bandwidths used for LTE, 5G, 6 gigahertz radio, and many other minor communication system is just around, maybe around the 15 gigahertz or maybe anyway, much less than 15 gigahertz or something. But as you can see here, the single frequency window at above the 200 gigahertz may provide more than 40 gigahertz or maybe up to 100 gigahertz, which is three times or even around the eight times wider bandwidth than that of the entire one used in this planning right now around the world. So the single frequency window at terahertz frequency can extreme uh, it can provide extremely huge bandwidth that is uh, ever used in 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 any sort of communication system. So if we are really able to use such a wide bandwidth, then probably we can send much more data or we can make something new which was not able at narrow bandwidth uh, environment. So that is a key idea why we are so interested in Okay, so we are so interested in the terrorist communication system. Then what we can do with that, what we can do with that the high data rate com wireless communication system. Of course, the, the I mean the, the WPAN over the WLAN or Wi-Fi can be improved at the terrorist frequencies with a higher data rate. That is a one simple example. In case of the uh, maybe Japan or many European countries, including the United States, the still last formal communication system is valid because of the single house, I mean, the uh, cultures. And also kiosk data download system can be one most, I mean, important applications for future, I mean, very, I mean, as are the uh, key applications of terrorist communication system. I may have a chance to talk about this a little more detail later. Uh, Backhaul or frontal uh, system is a very important issue even, uh, even in the 5G communication system. That's because uh, basically the millimeter wave based 5G communication system uh, working at around the 28 gigahertz in case of the Korea. Meaning that uh, since the higher uh, carrier frequencies, the dimensions or diameter of single uh, diameter of the, the single cell of the cellular system should be shrink down to around 100 meters or even below, meaning that uh, compared to the 4G system operating at low frequencies, the density of antenna station should be dramatically increased. So uh, we need to install very large, large number of antennas, particularly in the metro cities or middle of the big cities. But problem is that the usually such an antenna station is fed by a fiber optic uh, communications or uh, let's say, uh, I mean, wireless communication link. But if you need to install more, I mean, the hundred times or even thousand times uh, large number of antennas in the big city, middle of the big city, then the large of ground, uh, ground construction is necessary, but there is a nearly impossible to do that, particularly in maybe big cities, such as maybe Delhi, Seoul or New York or London. 
So some people are now thinking, how about to deliver such a huge data with a wireless manner from one point to the other antenna station? So there is a concept of backhaul or frontal link. But problem is that the required data link for such a, uh, let's say, a data feeding network is around 100 gigabit per second at this time. Then how we can implement, implement such a 100 gigabit per second wireless link? The only remaining issue is how we can extend the bandwidth available for such applications, then the only option would be around, uh, will be the terrorist communications or the operating at very high frequencies. Data center or intra-device communication system is something like that. These days, the as you know that the Google or Amazon, almost all the data around the world is once concentrated in, I mean, a couple of the data center maybe of the Google's or Amazon. The problem is that the, all the data are connected, uh, all the data between the server is uh, exchanged with the plastic fibers, but the, such a plastic fiber cause some problem in maintenance and uh, in terms of the network flexibility. So many people are thinking to replace such a plastic fibers with a wireless communication system. And the, again, in order to replace the plastic fibers, the wireless link, new wireless link should uh, provide high enough or as high data, uh, as high data capacity as uh, the plastic fiber can provide, then the only option is to increase the carrier frequency, maybe more than 100 years. And also the, in case of the uh, device to device communication system, maybe you know that the, I mean, the required uh, data throughput between CPU and memory is now already exceed a couple of terabit per second. Terabit per second is now uh, provided by very low cost printed circuit board uh, technology. But in order to increase the computation powers of personal computers or uh, you must smartphone or something like that, once we need to increase the data throughput between CPU and memory, since it is quite hard to integrate the CPU and memory in single dies, once we need to rely on something new data channels between them, and some people also thinking about uh, thinking about to use the fiber optic or something optical link, and also one also think how can I use wireless link right between CPU and memory even for such a short distance. So again, you know to accommodate such a very huge data rate of around the terabit per second or something, then we, the only option available to us is to use very high carrier frequencies. So uh, of course, okay, so uh, it is quite hard to, I mean, I mean, uh, define how high data rate will be necessary in near futures, but uh, let's assume that here simply, 100 gigabit per second data rate is, I mean, uh, required, will be required in near futures, then, I mean, theoretically, there are many options to achieve such a high data rate. For example, according to the communication theory, the maximum data rate of given channel or with the given devices will be uh, de defined by the number of antenna. Okay number of antenna and bandwidth and uh, the moderation scheme or spectral efficiency. So when we use a very narrow bandwidth around the one gigahertz with a very advanced moderation scheme such as uh, six, I mean, a thousand comms with a large number of antennas of around eight, then finally 80 gigabit per second will be available. In my case, I like to rather use wider bandwidth around the 50 gigahertz with a simple moderation scheme such as a QPSK with a very simple, uh, with a single antennas. Then finally, I may get 100 gigabit per second data channels. So, and also there are many other intermediate solutions. So I'm not going to say which combination is the best one. It might be, depend. it will be depends on the circumstance of, a, of a available, let's say the, I mean, the resources but I'm, what I'm saying here is that anyway, anyway, rather used wider bandwidth will be much advantageous compared to 
the other option such as uh, I mean I mean massively rely on the uh, MIMO technology or rely on, or trying to increase the spectral efficiency up to a thousand crumbs or something. So I'm going to talk about from now on. Okay, so uh, uh, the first data transmissions experiment at terahertz frequencies has been conducted in 2004, I guess, uh, by one uh, German group. But at that time, it was quite hard to even produce or detect uh, terahertz frequencies uh, uh, with a high enough power or signal to noise ratio. So after that, uh, particularly in my group from 2006, uh, we tried to use the uh, Five optic devices. Uh, so uh, if we are using the photo mixers, which is a, a kind of the uh, nonlinear devices uh, working based on the uh, scale detectors. So what I'm saying here is that once we yeah once we couple or well, once we yes couple the two laser diodes into the single photo mixers, then this photo mixer will produce the electromagnetic wave of which frequency is correspond to the frequency difference difference between uh, between two laser diodes. So they simply, if we set the wavelengths or frequency of two laser diodes uh, of which difference is around the 300 gigahertz, then at the, at the output of the photo mixer, the 300 gigahertz very clean a sine wave or electromagnetic wave will be uh, generated. So in that, so if we insert, I'm sorry, I'm I, I'm not, I, I have no idea why, but uh, I cannot use my, my, can I use, just give me a second, please. Okay. Okay, I like that, right? So uh, if we can, if we simply insert electro-optical moderators right between uh, a radio diode and photometers, then we can also moderate the uh, the uh, terahertz uh, signals. Then what we can, what we are going to do here is that uh, here is a very simple uh, terahertz uh, communication system with uh, such a let's say a uh, photonic transmitters. So here is a, here is a UTSPD used as a transmitter. And here is a very simple detectors. So I hope uh, I need to note that, I mean, you need to note that the receiver used at that experiment was actually a single diode. So since we will use the ASK data moderations, the, at the receivers, uh, non coherent envelope detector was used. But problem was that the 300 gigahertz amplifier was not available. So that simply we uh, uh, integrated one uh, link slot diode along with a single diode in the single chip. And that the uh, dielectric lens, hemispherical silicon lens, was placed at the bottom uh, backside of the, uh, 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 the uh, detector chip or diode chip. And uh, that receiver was used at the other side of this experimental setup. And then the, the, uh, the result, major result is shown here. So uh, at the same, the result first, speaking the result first, the, we got the 24 gigabit per second error-free data transmissions. The meaning of error-free transmission here is that we didn't use any sort of signal processing or signal conditions conditioning uh, equipment or uh, algorithm in this experiment. So that, uh, uh, for example, here is you now seeing the eye diagram, but this eye diagram is the low data uh, extracted from this uh, output node of the entire receivers or the uh, envelope detectors. So please note that during this experiment, during this experiment, the output power from the UTSPD was very poor. Uh, the power was around the less than 100 microwatt, and then there was no uh, amplifier in the receivers, and also the modulation scheme was very simple one, such as OOK or ASK. So if you are uh, considering the contemporary wireless communication systems such as uh, 4G or 5G, LTE, 
then the upper powers or very low, I mean, the receivers with no amplifiers or, or all key moderations, all these technique is a very old or very, I mean, the low level technique or low level uh, devices. So even with uh, such a poor uh, conditions, we were able to get 24 gigabit per second error-free data transmission with no signal processing. Then what does it imply? So important thing is that since we were able to utilize the advantage coming from the wide bandwidth at 300 gigahertz, we were able to transmit such a high data rate with no big problem, even with such a poor devices or poor modulation scheme. So important thing is that again, according to the Shannon theory, if we can increase the operating bandwidth, then we can get wider or large data capacity. So the importance of this experimental setup is the importance of wide, utilizing the wide bandwidth at higher frequencies. Actually, that is the key reason why we are interested in terahertz frequencies. But of course, such an experiment, I mean, bulky experimental setup is not, not we are uh, looking at for future wireless communication system. And is the system or device need to be integrated as a part of your smartphone. You know, to do that, the, there are, uh, we need many or several the enabling technologies such as uh, devices. Obviously, the single device should or can have to operate at above, I um, mean, 100 gigahertz MOA and up to a couple of terahertz frequencies. And uh, with such a fundamental devices, we need to, or we uh, need to, yes, develop the circuits I mean, the various functional devices necessary for wireless communication system, as you may know that, such as a power amplifier or low noise amplifiers, maybe mixers or signal source, many fundamental, I mean, fundamental functional components are necessary. So we need to design that. Antenna is very, I mean, serious issues for almost all wireless communication or wireless uh, 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 system. Particularly since at high, uh, terrace communication system, the wavelength is getting to uh, shrink a lot, meaning that the dimension of antenna uh, should be uh, very small. Then the, I mean the, and also the dielectric loss and the metallic loss getting to, uh, getting increased as frequency increases so that the antenna is very, I mean, challenging issue at high frequencies. And also the packaging is also very uh, challenging one because uh, how we can fabricate that or what is the good materials or, I mean, yeah, so such a thing is very important. And also, as I said before, uh, in the contemporary wireless communication system, almost all system uh, try to increase the signal to noise ratio, you know, to increase the data capacity. But in case of terrace communication system or in case of this uh, wireless system operating at terrace frequencies, the, it is quite hard to produce a high enough powers, meaning that you don't have any margin or technical margin to increase to improve the signal to noise ratio. Then the on, and also once we increase the bandwidth, then the overall signal to noise ratio will be getting degraded. Then the, probably we need to think something new, a uh, physical layer of a communication system from the beginning. So. Uh, uh, so there is a, uh, about the uh, physical layer design. So what kind of architecture is uh, good enough or what is uh, uh, wave propagation at such a high frequencies? So that is uh, related to the channel modeling. And also once we need to clearly define what is the target applications. So, and uh, probably there are many other the challenges or key points we need to uh, think about. So, uh, so to, from now on, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the, these issues one by one based on our experimental result. Okay, so first of all, the device technology. So uh, if you are thinking about the terrace transistors or terrace, I mean, the devices, uh, many people think that is quite hard to be realized, but please note that here I plot the uh, 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 the maximum operating frequency of transistors what, uh, as, uh, with respect to the uh, time or years. So as you can see here, the 10 terahertz, uh, I'm sorry, one terahertz or thousand gigahertz uh, transistor has been already developed 10 years ago. 
by uh, North Lok Grumman German or Fraunhofer, I'm sorry, North Lok Grumman United States or the Fraunhofer Institute of a German group. And later on, the other many uh, institutes such as the Teledyne entity or the IHP tried their own best and uh, finally developed uh, terahertz uh, uh, transistors. And uh, with those devices, many other many functional components such as a wideband amplifier and power amplifiers and the frequency divider and the uh, oscillators and the phase lock loop all these components has been reported 10 years ago so uh, so uh, please note that the terahertz devices has been already developed and uh, may be able to be used in your group or for your research so at that time, I mean, the, around the, at around the 2011 in my group, uh, we decided to develop something system level terrace communication system. Actually, there is uh, something like uh, this, I mean, the kiosk data download system. So kiosk data download system is something like, uh, we are assuming the something like a, a data vending machine. So vending machine means that uh, once you need, uh, for example, if you need to have very huge size of data at the out of your office, then once you approach to this terminal and then the, you pay some money and the select you like to download, then after a couple of seconds, the data will be uh, transmitted to your smartphone in wireless manners. So here is uh, the brief, uh, the idea of kiosk data download system. Uh, technically, such a kiosk system can be capitalized as a stationary transmitter and mobile receivers. And also, as you can see here, the link distance will be much less than one meter. And also, the overall network will be something like a peer-to-peer -peer communication system. So based on this scenario, we try to get some uh, brief number of link budget calculations. So we assume that uh, 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 10 dBm of power from transmitters at 300 gigahertz and the figure of around uh, uh, 15 dB with a 10 dB uh, system margin. And we calculated the available data rate, uh, data rate with respect to the total antenna gain from transmitter and receivers. And please look at this uh, uh, black trace, which is the uh, data rate available with the uh, ASK data moderations with no uh, I mean the error collection algorithm or signal processing. So as you can see here, at least 20 or 30 gigabit per second will be available if the 50 dBi total antenna gain is uh, uh, provided. If you are thinking microwave frequency wireless communication system, then 50 dBi, if I divide it by half for transmitter and receiver respectively, then at least 25 dBi antenna gain is necessary for TX and RX individually. But uh, at the high frequencies at 300 gigahertz, considering the wavelengths of around the one millimeters, 20, the dimension of 25 dBi, let's say whole antenna is not that, that there is not causing serious problem even for the smartphone applications. So based on that, uh, we I mean configure the overall uh, structures in that way, and uh, uh, so here is the transistors we developed at that time. So we used to use a 3.5 a compound semiconductor based hemp transistors. Uh, after two or three years development, we finally got the, around the 700 gigahertz cutoff frequencies in terms of FMX. And also uh, uh, please note that uh, the very high frequency uh, is very easily, uh, of, I mean, the uh, mm, accumulated in the high dielectric uh, material, high dielectric constant material. So that the once we now using the semiconductor material of which is dielectric constant is around the nine to 10, the terahertz frequency on the circuit can be easily coupled into the substrate that cause I mean, serious issue as a substrate mode, which is not desired for as a integrated circuit. So in order to avoid that, we need to thin down the substrate down to 50 microns in case of the uh, 300 gigahertz applications. And also we need to insert, I mean, the very dense uh, substrate via hole, you know, to suppress such a substrate mode. So uh, uh, the simply the high frequency operation is not that good enough. Uh, 
in order to operate the integrated circuit at such a high frequencies, we also need to eliminate the substrate mode. And such a thing usually can be eliminated with uh, something dedicated fabrication process. Of course, some people are trying to sub I mean, suppress such a substrate mode with, uh, let's say, uh, metal material uh, patterns on the uh, on the uh, the top metals. So there is also a new uh, new research topic. But anyway, in our cases, we developed our own the dedicated process. So with that one, we developed the power amplifiers. So you know, to get the uh, hundred, I'm sorry, ten dBm output powers at around the uh, uh, 300 years, we use the 12 stage in series and the uh, A stage in parallel. And then the result was around the 9 dBm of powers over the 35 gigahertz bandwidth. So again, the reason why we are using terahertz frequency is to use huge bandwidth, meaning that the all individual component for such a component uh, communication system should provide wide enough, a uh, wide enough bandwidth. So, so even for the power amplifier, the huge or wide bandwidth is very important one. So in that point of view, uh, we succeed to get, I mean, wide bandwidth operations at the high enough powers. But problem is that, please look at this. So in you know, order to get 10 dBm of powers or 10 milliwatt of powers, the amplifier need to be, need to consume around the 1.3 watt, meaning that the efficiency is much less than 1%. 99% of DC is dissipated by, or dissipated by heat inside the, uh, 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 the amplifier, which cause actually a serious, may cause serious problem in practical uh, conditions. So in near futures, or if you are working on this area, we need to really think about this uh, power dissipation issues. Uh, ASK moderator was uh, also developed as well. So in case of the ASK moderators, the most important one is that, again, the, of course, the on-off ratio, but the group delay is very important. So that in order to get wide enough group delay performance, uh, we utilize the uh, shunt switch, uh, distributed shunt switch topology. And also the receiver also uh, was, has been, uh, was also developed as well. So in case of the receivers, the antenna amplifiers and the uh, uh, the envelope detector and data uh, uh, amplifier, all these four components has been uh, integrated into a single chip. And uh, in order to into, uh, increase the directivity of this uh, simple dipole antenna, uh, we added or we used the hemispherical dielectric range at the back, uh, at the back side of the, this uh, RFI uh, receiver IC. And then the, the measured uh, antenna gain I'm sorry, the amplifier gain was more than uh, 24 dBi and the bandwidth was more around uh, uh, 10%. So uh, here is a photo of the first experiment with the devices we developed, I showed in uh, right previous slide. And uh, as you can, uh, okay, so here is a transmitter chain and uh, here is a receiver block. And as you can see here, the uh, measured eye diagram uh, shows very clear open eye and the measured VR was much less than 10 to the minus 10. So we can say this uh, error-free transmission has been achieved. Again, in this experiment, we didn't use any sort of signal processing. Please note that at short distance, because of a high power injection into the receivers, the receiver was uh, saturated so that the VR was degraded a lot. At a longer distance, because of the poor, or I mean, the losing the powers at the receivers, so that the BL or signal to noise ratio was degraded, uh, resulting in the degrading the BEL. And the, here is a one video clip for you that is about the first experiment. Uh, experiment. So you are now seeing the head of the transmitting antennas, and the, now we are seeing the receivers, which is uh, moving on the moving stage, and the blue dot, uh, green dot, meaning that the dis indicating the link distance. Now the black red is uh, 0.9 meters and the red one is a uh, one meter long distance. And uh, as you can see, the, since the receiver is moving backward the link, the eye diagram is uh, shifting in real time. But even at up to 1.1 meter distance, you can see the, yet the open and clear clean eyes. And uh, 
we made up uh, we made up such a modules for final demonstrations in kiosk data download scenario and uh, we put the transmitters in the you can see here the in the bottom side of the transmitters and the receiver module was uh, put into the uh, smartphone mockup and also you know to make sure that the system work as a, a work a very lively so that uh, we added uh, uh, error free and uh, uh, error collection uh, uh, board in the middle of the transmitter. I, I'm sorry, at the back side of the transmitter receivers. So anyway, so here is another video clip uh, of the final demonstrations. Yeah. So. This looks very simple, but uh, you know, what he did is uh, once he placed his own smartphone on top of the kiosk terminal, and then first click is about the uh, the payment, and the second click is about the data selections. And uh, after, after seven seconds, the 17 gigabyte data has been transmitted from transmitter to the uh, smartphone model. So in that case, the, uh, the physical Physical data rate was around uh, maybe 21 or 2 gigabit per second, but uh, logical data rate was degraded down to 17 gigabyte. That's because of some uh, overhead for the uh, the, uh, the system level uh, algorithm or uh, network stack. So the actually this is a finish of the our uh, the research project, but during that we faced a couple of the uh, issues. That's about uh, our packaging. Since at very high frequencies, particularly at terrace frequencies, this kind of the metallic block, which is called the waveguide uh, module, is commonly used because of very low loss and the reliable operations. So actually, you know, to get the, this kind of the, I mean, the uh, waveguide modules, the, we need a very huge and heavy metal block. But there is not that, I mean, the uh, practical for smartphone applications. So so we thought that uh, we remind that the terrestrial frequency is right between microwave and the light wave, meaning that obviously we can use the microwave technology, conventional electronic device technology, packaging technology, but also probably the photonic device packaging technique will be available at terrestrial frequencies. So uh, we did the same thing at terrestrial frequencies. So basic idea is actually coming from the LED packaging. So you know, so you know that the LED packaging is very cheap. So that uh, I mean the very low cost packaging or low cost device is available with such a packaging scheme. So the detail is that once we need a, a electrode structure, and then we need to put the LED chip in the middle of that electrode, and then mold the entire structure with the plastic materials or many other material, low loss materials, and then make a, let's say a range shape, you know, to eliminate the beam from the LED core chips into the airs. We did the same thing. So yellow one is the LTCC material so that we made the electrode structures uh, with the LTCC uh, fabrication technology, and then put the MMIC uh, of it, I mean, uh, which integrated with uh, uh, on-chip antennas, and then place the dielectric lens on the backside of the uh, MMIC. And the, here is a photo of that fabricated uh, module, very compact and uh, low-cost module. So as you can see here is the third now, this one is a third receiver module. This very compact module, the size of this compact module is almost comparable to that of the uh, 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 the a camera module used in your smartphone. And the uh, RF performance, you can see here, there is no any degradations in terms of the, uh, the Q factor of I diagram. So according to this Q factor of this I diagram, we believe that this, I mean, the very compact receiver module also will provide almost, I mean, nearly error-free transmissions at least at around at up to uh, one meter long distance. And also, uh, the, we also think about thought about the how about to make a very compact, I mean, the horn antennas on the backside of the electric, I mean, packaging. 
So we made uh, something like a pyramid home antenna shape with the uh, LTCC fabrication technique. So you can see here, so we uh, stacked up the 13 layers of LTCC materials so that the length of the antenna was around 2.7 millimeters. And also by using the very careful design of the, uh, the, the, cap and the uh, cavity structures, we, can, we were able to get this kind of very fine, the pyramid shape. And the final, the measured antenna gain was more than uh, 15 dBi. Uh, or, and the operating bandwidth was much larger, wider than the uh, 40 years. So by using this kind of new ideas or a new concept of the uh, antennas or packaging, uh, probably we are able to uh, design very compact uh, one. And the other issue we faced at that time was very, I mean, very first time uh, on my talk, I talked about the, uh, if we are able to utilize such a huge bandwidth, probably 100 kp per second data rate will be uh, available. But the, the previous experimental setup showed just around the 20 or 30 gap per second. Then the, what was problem? Surely it is actually coming from the poor spectral efficiency. So if you come back to this Shannon theory, uh, as I said before, at terahertz frequencies, the improving signal to noise ratio is very uh, challenging. So the only option to us is the improving or increasing the data rate. So, but if we increase the data rate, the signal to noise ratio will be degraded a lot. But then finally, overall SNL can go to one, then the overall, the low term will go to one. Then finally, the channel theory will be simplified as below. The maximum data capacity will be bounded by simply W bandwidth. What does it mean is that the spectral efficiency or optimal spectral efficiency will be around the one, meaning that the QPSK moderation would be the most effective way at terahertz frequencies. So that might be true. So we developed the QPSK moderator and the moderator here and the demonstrated BER was almost all the error-free transmissions at 50 GAP per second. So once we double the data rate, simply by exchanging from ASK to uh, 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 QPSK. Since the QPSK operating in the envelope constant uh, waveform, so that in terms of signal to noise ratio, QPSK scheme will provide much better uh, performance than the ASK one. And also since then, the, we improved the power amplifier and the sensitivity of the receiver uh, more and more. And finally, we were able to transmit 16 qualm between transmitter and receivers. And then finally, we succeed to transmit 100 gap per second, 16 qualm uh, data from TX to RX. At that time, the link distance was around uh, 2.4 meters or 2.2 meters. So uh, again, even at large frequencies, if we are able to utilize such a huge bandwidth while maintaining the uh, signal to noise ratio as a comparable level, then the 100 kb per second will be uh, available. Okay, so before concluding my talk today, so I'd like to emphasize what is the most important uh, remaining issues for next, I mean, let's say, a 60 communication system or another uh, terrace communication system. I hope you know that we developed the power amplifier and many other amplifier and functional block. Such a, such a, I mean, the functional block or MMIC will be improved uh, again, but it will be quite hard to get more powers. So I hope you remember that according to our, the very preliminary link budget calculations, very high antenna gain was necessary. For example, 30 dBi gain, antenna gain was necessary, but such a high gain cannot be compensated with a power amplifier, you know? meaning that we need to use such a high antenna gain, then narrow beam will be produced, then the coverage will, be, will cause serious issues in practical applications, then finally, the only option we need to improve, or I'm sorry, the only solution we can overcome that 
such a the coverage is a uh, beam forming so that anyway we need to get the beam forming chipset or transceivers so that uh, in my group we are now working to develop such a, a hybrid beam forming transceivers operating at above 200 gigahertz so we are thinking the beam forming functionality with the CMOS technology while the power or noise will be compensated with the uh, 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 compound semiconductors okay so uh i'm sorry i delayed a lot but anyway it is uh the end of uh last slide of my talk today and uh here is a summary so the third communication research has been uh is going to be end as a first phase so in first phase of research the third communication system has been developed as a demonstration of the technology or the devices so in that point of view, anyway, 20 gigabit per second or 100 gigabit per second has been developed with uh, dedicated devices. So from now on, the, this time the uh, 5G system has been released shortly. And also we are now talking about the 6G communication system that would be uh, operating in uh, third frequencies. Then uh, maybe we need to think about what is the uh, most feasible way to get the 6G communication system. I believe that there are a couple of, I mean, the important issues. One is that uh, about the physical layer, as I said before, um, almost all contemporary wireless communication system is working in bandwidth limited region. So uh, in the communication system, uh, they try to increase the signal to noise ratio as high as possible, you know, to compensate for the very narrow bandwidth. But at third frequencies, the increasing power is very challenging. So that, and also the, but, uh, but the bandwidth is very, uh, very wide bandwidth is available. So then the, uh, the overall system may need to uh, operate in power limited region instead of bandwidth limited region. Then again, the entire physical layer need to be uh, changed a lot. And the beamforming transceiver is very essential one, you know, to overcome the very directional beam coming from high gain antennas. And the spectral issue and the vapor level packaging, I didn't mention uh, detail today, but uh, such a thing will be also very important, particularly for a 6G or a consumer, uh, such a consumer uh, devices or uh, applications such as uh, 6G Wi-Fi or something like that. So, okay, this is all I prepared for you today and uh, uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. So uh, please, uh, okay, so thank you very much and uh, I will be more than happier to have uh, any questions from you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Song. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Song. The presentation was really nice uh, and we have some questions uh, popped up in the chat box. Uh, so uh, I request the participants uh, to please ask your doubts and uh, you can also remark your feedback in the chat box in the meantime. And I also, uh, yeah, I feel happy to inform you that the floor is open for discussion. So sir, our question is from uh, Srivada. So she is asking uh, about uh, the, the, were there any issues when you switched from uh, ASK to higher modulation schemes? Uh, so question must be around the, how we can increase the modulation scheme from ASK to QPSK or the 16 quam higher modulation scheme, right? Yes. So if, okay, the answer is that, so in case of ASK, it is quite easy to implement that with an analog way. What I'm saying is that simply by using the switch devices, we are able to uh, generate the ASK modulations. But in case of the QPSK system, as you said, we need to rely on something like uh, digital uh, devices such as uh, high-speed ADC or DAC. So in our experiment, actually, uh, we used to, oh, okay, I don't know what is this. All right, so, uh, I'm sorry, I cannot move my slide. Uh, do you have any idea how can I 
in disable to use this i mean the uh, uh, probably okay. uh, if you said yes sir uh, sir if you could uh, switch off that pointer option uh, maybe yeah yes sir right right i got that i got that thank you very much so in our case we i'm not sure that you can use this or not but anyway we used to use the uh, very high speed dac and uh, adc to generate the uh, QPSK signal and uh, demodulate the uh, QPSK signal. So that uh, in that point of view, the, our experiment setup is not that perfect uh, as a communication system. So, uh, but uh, there are many challenges to make uh, such a QPSK modulators in analog way or uh, at 300 gears directly. So uh, we believe that uh, such a device will be available in near features by maybe uh, some of you. Uh, Okay, hope this, this can be an answer to your question. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So another question uh, is regarding uh, the possibility of transfer from body implanted sensors using terahertz technology. So, so uh, she's uh, asking, yeah. Yes, yeah. please go ahead. Right. So uh, uh, first of all, the uh, terahertz uh, wave usually, according to my experience, I mean, the first of all, there is a, a little study about terahertz wave and the human body, so that uh, I cannot, I mean, the uh, answer about that in detail. But uh, based on my uh, experience, first of all, so the the terahertz wave cannot be penetrate the human body at all. So according to the literature, the penetration depth uh, of the terahertz wave of the human skin is just around a couple of millimeters. So that uh, uh, in that point of view, the, as a communication system, the human body itself is a, one of the very serious uh, obstacle we need to, I mean, overcome. And also, the, and also we need to think about uh, some kind of the safety issues once the terrorist communication is getting popular around the world. So, but uh, as far as I know, so terrorist wave is not getting ionized the human cell. So that uh, in that point of view. The terrorist is not so much dangerous such as uh, X-ray. The only issue can be caused by the terrorist wave is something like a heat. But according to the, as you know, that the, the human body is basically consists of the water. So that the, if we are considering the absorption rate of terrorist wave by waters, then the, the heating issue may not so uh, serious considering the available power from the uh, terrorist communication system transmitter. So what I'm saying is that uh, just, I mean, the, a couple of milliwatts will be generated by uh, trans transmitters. So even if such a power is all absorbed by uh, human body tissues, then even in that case, the ter I mean, the, the temperature increase will be much less than maybe point a few degrees or something. So it is my, uh, I mean, the uh, uh, knowledge. So, but it, it may not wrong. That is just based on my I mean, short knowledge. But anyway, as far as I know, the terrorist wave may not harm, I mean, human bodies or a health problem, cause um, safety issues. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so another query is um, regarding the bond wires. So uh, in a, in a uh, integration setup, we, we might have bond wires in the connection. So bond wires will be so inductive in nature. So what are our um, design techniques to mitigate that inductance? At the That's right. Stage? Right. Thank you very much for a very important issue. And uh, actually, because of the time mirrors, I didn't cover this slide. Uh, uh, as you uh, mentioned, the uh, wire bonding is very important. I mean, very key technique for general the uh, packaging. But even at the third frequencies, uh, you know, to introduce such a the, uh, uh, wire bonding, I'm sorry, the uh, waveguide packaging. Once we need to apply the wire bonding between the MMIC or RFIC to the electromagnetic couplers. So it is a very general uh, topology, but problem is that the, such a wire is, probably we can make the wire as short as possible so that the physically it will be very short, but still electrically very low at terahertz frequency. So it is quite hard to be uh, avoid the inductance coming from that wires. So many people are trying to integrate, but uh, the good news is that the, since the wavelength is very high, the electromagnetic structure can be integrated along with the uh, uh, core block or RFIC. So that you are now seeing the electromagnetic coupler integrated with the 
uh, let's say uh, amplifiers or something functional block, then simply by inserting the overall the MMIC in the middle of the waveguide channel, then the everything will be I mean completed even with no wire bonding. So uh, again, wire bonding is very important one, but as the frequency increases, we can get increase integrate the electromagnetic structure as a part of the MMIC, so that uh, you don't need to I guess worry about the uh, wire bonding I mean uh, issues at the high frequency. Of course, there is one uh, drawback of these electromagnetic structures because uh, in generally in general the the electro I mean, the MMIC uh, is uh, are uh, going to be measured on vapor environment before packaging, but in case of these kind of the electromagnetic, I mean uh, structures, uh, there is no way to measure with the on vapor structure. So that the, in order to get the performance of these devices, then maybe you need to make uh, um, tag structures or you need to package the overall, I mean uh, devices first. So, but anyway, the just simply uh, regarding the uh, wire bonding, we can avoid that with uh, this kind of integrated electromagnetic structures. Uh, coming to the last question, uh, sir, uh, uh, is it possible uh, to use 3D printing to make waveguides uh, structures which we are talking about? Because at Terahertz, uh, this, even the roughness model is also going to be uh, uh, constrained. So, uh, are there any uh, papers on 3D printing used for the waveguide uh, couplers or the on-chip couplers which you have been talking about? Yes. So, uh, regarding the on-chip structure or uh, coupling structures, as far as you know, this typical, I mean, design is, uh, uh, I guess, this is uh, almost uh, all possible configurations. I guess. Okay. Right. As, so that was the last question, sir. Uh, so, uh, uh, now I got another question privately. So, uh, this question is from Mehad. So, the question is like, if the terahertz is being proposed for biomedical imaging, how would that be possible if it cannot pre uh, penetrate the human tissue? Okay, so, uh, uh, the question must be about the, you are thinking about the biomedical applications, but, uh, uh, the how to get penetrate uh, the human tissues. So as I said before, the basically the reason why the terahertz wave cannot penetrate the human body is uh, uh, water contents of the living tissues. So that uh, if you are now, if you, as long as you are, uh, so if you are not, I mean, uh, trying to measure the, I mean, the the human alive, then, and uh, if you just trying to measure the the part of human tissues and the sample of the tissues, then the one common way is to uh, frozen the sample. Then the basically the what so please you know that the terrace wave cannot penetrate waters, but terrace wave can penetrate ice more effectively. So that once you, I mean, so there's a two way to remove the waters. One is the replace the water with the paraffin by drying and the replace the paraffin materials. And also there are another option is simply by uh, frozen the samples, then the, probably you can make the territory wave penetrate a little bit more, more thicker uh, samples. Okay, so, thank you, okay. sir. Yeah. yeah. So uh, actually I made a mistake that was from uh, so, uh, so we are getting a very uh, like long list of uh, appreciation mail, uh, for, uh, like appreciation comments as well as uh, very positive feedbacks regarding your presentation. Thank you for sharing your research directions and giving us such a nice presentation. So before we go to the next proceeding uh, of the formal uh, event, uh, I request all the participants to turn on the videos for a virtual photo shoot. Participants, please turn on your camera so that we can have a virtual photo shoot.
Thank you so much. So over to you, Mahal, for the, uh, the further initiations. And Gopika, you got a good photo? Uh, yes, sir. I got two clicks, uh, but uh, if we want, we can yeah, yeah, try one go. more time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, no problem. <laughs> Yes, sir. That. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Over to my head. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you very much for your kind attention and uh, arranging this. I mean, wonderful virtual meetings with a large number of attendees. Yeah. I have few queries, but I'll not ask now. I'll I'll interact through email because uh, you know it's already quite long. So we'll interact through email. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Meher, take over and uh, go so to the last concluding part. Presentation. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for this presentation. So I would like to call from Sir Adam Chapter Director, APC BCDH, for a formal. Good afternoon, uh, good evening, and uh, good morning. On behalf of MTTS Kerala section, I would like to thank Professor Ho Jing Song for giving a wonderful technical talk, highly content with the, with the experiences, practical experiences, which he had, and it clearly indicates the need, very much need for the, for the present, uh, um, uh, technical um, things we are concerned like IoT, even 5G or even beyond that. So we have we had a very wonderful talk from you, sir. And uh, the talk was will definitely inspire the young generations. And uh, I, I I assume that they will at least some of them will pursue their career or uh, research in this uh, area. I would like to thank Professor B.S. Manoj for inaugurating this session and always uh, uh, standing with us whenever APMTT uh, events are there. Uh, Professor Manoj, sir, from IST, thank you so much, sir. And Dr. Chinmay Saha for his tireless efforts and ensuring that the chapter members, especially the students, are getting benefited. And it's evident from the, its contributions he has done for the Kerala section uh, since 2016. I would like to thank all the participants around the globe for keenly attending the session and thank uh, especially faculty members, students, research scholars, etc., for accepting our invitation and uh, attending this session. Thank you all. And I would like to urge especially the student community to join APMTT so that you will get benefit in all aspects. And if you have that love for Arab and allied areas. Finally, I would like to thank the volunteers, our question moderation done by Ms. Gobiga, Meher, Manu, and all other students who were supporting like us, like anything for for these activities. Thank you all and all to Meher for final conclusion. Thank you so much, sir. And uh, we have the end of this EML. And all participants kindly fill this uh, feedback form. I have posted that in our chat box. And it comes for more events and EMLs. Thank you so much.
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Professor Song, again. And we want to meet, uh, you know, in Kerala in 2021, December or in 2022 for sure. Okay. I'm very looking forward to do that. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you all for attending this session. Thank you very much. And bye. Uh, have a bye good bye. weekend. Okay. Be safe. Yeah, you too. Thank you.